In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and unto the ages of all ages, Amen. Welcome to another episode of One Accord. And uh, in this series, we're trying to uh, look at the first two chapters in the book of Acts and to see the secret of the effectiveness of the early church, the apostolic era, and to see how we can apply that in today's church. It is so important for us if we want to look forward, first to look back and to see how the early apostolic church did it and learn from the so many lessons from that era. In today's episode, we're going to look at uh, the book of Acts chapter 2 and specifically verse 21. In the verses just before that, we found that St. Luke is referring to a few uh, prof uh, prophetic verses about the Lord Jesus Christ and His coming uh, from the book of Joel. And then he concludes uh, this uh, passage by uh, this beautiful verse that says, And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. One of the amazing things of the apostolic era is that it was so clear concerning its message. Its message was not blurred and it was not foggy. It was very clear. What was this message? The message that was delivered by the early church is that believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as the coming Messiah and in believing in Him, we shall all be saved. A very simple and a clear message without a lot of confusion. And people just needed to understand that He is the awaited Messiah. He is the coming Messiah. And there is no other name by which they shall be saved. If we look at the book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, nor is there salvation in any other, there is no salvation in any other name, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is no other name. And this message needs to be clear in the church today. And there are so many extremes that we can think about, which we as a community, as a church, as a belief, may be distracted and lean towards. One extreme of being immersed in cultures that are not necessarily Christian, we start to waver our truth and we start to compromise or to try to be more inclusive, to think why is it that there's only one name through which people must be saved? Isn't God the creator of the universe? Isn't God the one who loves all of humanity? Why would God create certain people and then sentence them to eternal damnation? And in that sense, we think that we love those people more than God himself does. Yes, we believe that he is creator of all. Yes, we believe that he is the sustainer of this universe, but also has given us options to choose from. And according to these choices, he will judge us at the end of times. There's only one way to the Father, which is through the Lord Jesus Christ, their Son, His Son. In that sense, we have to understand that number one, there is only one God of this universe. There cannot be multiple gods. There are many faiths and beliefs, especially those of the East, that believe in multiple gods or different forms of God. But actually, we cannot understand or even fathom that that could be any other gods beside the one and only true God the creator and the sustainer of the universe. There's some other religions who do not believe in the existence of God altogether and believe that we are the gods, I am the God, or God is just the indwelling in me, or I am the manifestation of God. And in that sense, all of their care is basically to do certain exercises, to live in peace, or to be a better person without giving honor and glory to the one only God of heaven and earth. There's some other religions that say that Jesus is a mere prophet or he's a good man or he's a good teacher, but that's about it because there is no way that God is going to appear in the form of a human being. And this is blasphemy to us. And again, we do not believe this because the incarnation of the Logos was due to his love and his sacrifice that offered us that only the unlimited God could die for sinners. All have gone astray from the righteousness of God and fallen into sin. 
but through the blood of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, we attain eternal life. Many of the New Age religion think that other prophets came after the Lord Jesus Christ. And different teachings, especially in the Western Hemisphere, that started arising and explaining to people that there could be other ways, that God is at the top of the mountain, and people kind of can reach Him through many different avenues, or experiencing God in different ways. And also, in the Western world, we have the native Indian religions who believe in the mother goddess or the earth as the supreme being. And in that sense, you know, the, the religion may ignore the presence of the one universal God in heaven and earth. But also, as an extension, there are people who are atheists and people who are non-believing. But how is it possible? that this orderly universe is created from or, or brought about from this order. We look at every small little creature that walks on the earth. Some of them are microscopic, some are more complex animals or human beings. And there's so much order in it, so much variety in it, and so many colors and, and, and genes and DNA and things that we don't see with our own eyes that are working in so much harmony. How amazing are these gifts? There must be a creator behind them. Well, this session is not necessarily one uh, to speak about defending our faith or apologetics. It's more so about our own conviction as a church. If we lose this understanding that there is no other name by which we would be saved except in the Lord Jesus Christ, the church has lost its witness to the world today. We have become like anyone else. The way that we convey this message has to be in modesty. It cannot be in arrogance. It has to be in confidence, but we cannot push it in people's faces or push it down their throats. It has to be done in the kindest and most gentlest way. But the Lord expects us as a church to continue this amazing witness of Him that is spoken about in the book of Acts, chapter 2, that it was so clear to the early church that they could only witness that whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Philippians chapter 2, starting from verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. But this is not the end of the story. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on the earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. My dear friends, we cannot waver away from this witness. There is no other name. Even if we live amongst the nations, even if we live amongst people that we need to appeal to, our message has to continue to be very clear. Otherwise, we lose our witness. We lose our identity as a church, given to all in the humblest way, but witnessing to the truth or saying the truth in love is what we have to say, that in the name of Jesus, there is salvation and no other name will bring us peace and joy in our life here on earth and ultimately in the heavens to come. And glory be to God forever. Amen.